Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. I am Billy Embody. Thank you for listening. We've got a lot to get to today on this exclusively recruiting podcast we're going to drop uh, for you guys. We've got a lot to talk about. I know SMU did open the season against Texas A&M Commerce, winning 77-60 on Monday night for the Rob Lanier era to get underway. But it was such a busy recruiting weekend for SMU that I felt like we really needed to spend some time talking about the Mustangs on the recruiting trail and what they're doing for the football side of things, both in the class of 2023 and the class of 2024. I want to kind of break this one down in a couple different ways. Needs and in the class of 2023 and also the job they're doing in the class of 2024. And we'll talk a lot about what transpired on Sunday night when SMU had about a, as good of a crop of prospects as you can get on campus, whether you're G5, P5, whatever league, SMU crushed it Sunday night with a lot of these prospects. We'll, of course, see down the line if it pays off with them. But um, SMU had a really nice uh, run of prospects on campus Sunday. But let's dive into the class of 2023 here. Currently, SMU is pretty much done uh, with its class of 2023, we'll see if kind of any JUCO prospects pop up or if another defensive lineman makes their way into the class. But right now, the class ranks fourth in the AAC. Um, it dropped off a little bit in terms of average recruit ranking when Richter Connolly decommitted a little bit of, ago and decided to uh, go to Tarleton State. Uh, an interesting move on his part, but kind of following some dreams of throwing in college and also some... Uh, uh, just other things involved with that one. SMU sits with 15 commitments in the class, which if you've been following recruiting for the last few years with the transfer portal and how active SMU has been on that front, that's about what you would expect. And right now, as it stands, just about everybody in the class looks like they're going to sign with the Mustangs. Haven't heard enough buzz around some of these prospects that are, you know, getting calls from bigger programs, some in interested programs trying to get them to visit or wait to sign. Haven't heard of any that are going to be kind of pushing it back. Um, and a few I've talked with over the past, however many, you know, probably two months that are solid that we know are going to sign with SMU are some of the local guys like Trip Reardon, the tight end out of Frisco, Wakeland, who's really had a good year. Uh, for Wakeland, uh, Frisco linebacker Brandon Miazono is going to sign and get there in January. Jackson Lavender, the wide receiver from Lovejoy High School, is going to sign and enroll early. Um, and then you get into uh, some of these other prospects, like an Alex Woods, who's from Florida. He informed me he's set to sign early. Uh, you can hear from Alex, uh, kind of react to SMU's, out, uh, SMU's offensive uh, production against Houston, as well as just kind of what the coaching staff's been telling them lately uh, in a full story at ontheponyexpress.com. You can try us free for seven days as well uh, for those of you looking to subscribe. Jamarian Carroll is another one that I'm surprised hasn't pulled in uh, even more big offers um, or really has pushed them to, to kind of wait. But right now, if you look at SMU, they've got Rasheed Rice leading the country in receiving it seems like they've had the ability to plug in a Dylan Goffney or get a Jordan Curley back. And even Moochie Dixon has shown flashes and they've seen those wide receivers be productive. And I don't think that's lost on Jamarian as he goes through kind of making sure this is what he wants to do, which he's been pretty solid with SMU. Um, he's not informed me that he's going to sign early, uh, but uh, that's, you know, a part of him. He's very, very quiet in terms of the recruiting process. I'm going to be checking with some sources to kind of see where things stand there, but he's very quiet in recruiting. It, it took me going out to Wichita Falls to go interview him and see what's up uh, to get some thoughts from him on his commitment. Uh, that's just th the type of kid he is. He's a ball player uh, and a really good one. And in my opinion, he should be the highest ranked recruit in the class on the on three consensus. And who knows if he gets a bump uh, by some of these services, he might end up that way. Um, SMU does have uh, an 89 prospect, 89 rated prospect committed to the Mustangs. Damian Wimberly out of Austin Vandegrift. 
He was in the stands for the game on Saturday night to take in uh, that win over Houston. Lonnie Johnson was there as well. He shut down his recruitment as well as his season dealing with a shoulder injury. Um, but Damian Wimberly is somebody that has continued to get calls from bigger programs. And if I'm watching somebody right now, not to flip, but just to keep an eye on, I would say Damian Wimberly is right at the top. He's had a really good senior season and a lot of programs are keeping an eye on him. It wouldn't shock me if he ends up going somewhere on a visit. On three, just bumped him up uh, to an 89. He's just one, one rating point short of a four-star prospect. Uh, he's the number 55 overall defensive lineman in the country right now. And then you look at Alex Kilgore, the current top-rated prospect in the class on the on-three consensus, uh, sits as the number 65 overall linebacker in the country out of Katy Paytow. Uh, and he's had an unreal senior year. He's done it on both sides of the ball. He's playing on one of the best defenses in the country. Um, and I think with Alex, uh, this was one that they were sweating. But I talked to him Sunday. And he said he has shut down his recruitment and he's going to sign early. He is locked in. That is huge news for SMU, both because of how good of a prospect he is, but also how talented of a linebacker he is and at the position of need. You look at losing Jimmy Phillips and Isaac Slade Matatia, there's a lot of playing time up for grabs. It's a good thing that SMU had Shannon Reed this year, but you know what? I'm pretty sure this is it for Shannon Reed as well. So some of these younger linebackers are going to have to step up and there's going to be playing time available uh, for Alex Kilgore and Brandon Miazono. So we'll be watching both of those guys early on in their careers to see if they can crack the starting lineup uh, or just be a too deep guy for SMU. And then you look at some of the rest of the class. Uh, Sean Scott, the offensive tackle out of California, is another one uh, that we are watching as far as can SMU hold on to him, uh, he got a Cal offer, but right now haven't heard as much matriculate on that front. Uh, he is really somebody that I've, I've gotten a chance to watch some of his senior tape. Really, really good. Um, and I think he can um, uh, really be somebody that could surprise. And some of these offensive linemen, you could be the lowest rated one. You could be the highest rated one. You could pan out, you could not. It's kind of a crapshoot. Um, but Sean Scott, out of these three offensive linemen, is somebody uh, who can really, I think, have the potential to be the best. And I think part of it's his length. Part of it's his uh, natural strength, despite not being the heaviest guy in the world. Um, I think Sean Scott's got a chance to be a good one. Um, and, and SMU was in on him early. And there are a couple schools that have identified him as a good prospect. And then Cal got a hold of his senior tape early on and offered. So we'll check in with Sean and continue to monitor him and see what his plans are for down the stretch. Um, but a really good prospect in his own right as well. Uh, Abdul Muhammad and Randy Reese out of Dallas South Oak Cliff are two guys I expect signed with the Mustangs as well as Reagan Gill, uh, who was also on campus for that game, uh, driving up uh, to see SMU play uh, his hometown team in uh, uh you know, Houston, he's from uh, Jersey Village High School there in the Houston area. So um, right now, everything looks pretty good for SMU uh, to sign everybody in their class. Um, Keldrick Luster uh, is somebody that is also set to sign the quarterback commit, as well as Jaden Milliner Jones out of DeSoto. I'm going to be seeing Jaden play on Thursday. That'll be the second time I've seen him play this year. Uh, I'm going to check him out in his playoff game Thursday night at DeSoto High, in case any of you guys want to make the trek down. Uh, we can meet up and watch uh, Jaden play um, in that one. So um, to recap, SMU right now looking pretty good with all of their commitments uh, as far as the class of 2023 goes. When it comes to who else could find their way in the class, this is where it's going to get interesting. SMU did extend a new offer in the JUCO ranks uh, just last week. Uh, Trevor Randall uh, out of Jones County, uh, a Ju JUCO in Mississippi, Picked up an offer. He was a four-year starter in high school. Ends up at JUCO. Has played in not one, not two, but three years at the JUCO level because of COVID. He was an all-conference player during that COVID-shortened season. And he's been a starter and a captain now for his JUCO team. SMU's really high on him to be a, kind of a plug-and-play player at that nickel safety spot um, and challenge Brandon Crosley at that spot. So 
I'm looking forward to seeing kind of how that one unfolds. He's shorter than you would imagine. He's 5'9", but he's kind of built, ready to go. You would expect him to be for probably a 21-year-old prospect. 195 pounds. I love his tape. Um, Maybe a diamond in the rough here. He's got Hawaii. He's got um, Nichols and McNeese and uh, I think some other um, kind of low-end FBS schools after him. Um, but you know what? We, we've kind of seen some of these guys on tape that don't look that good, that are either highly rated or have great size or whatever, and they don't pan out. But this kid loves football. Talking with him, he's really excited to take a visit to SMU. Be sure to uh, subscribe to OnThePonyExpress.com to keep up with a lot of these prospects as they head toward their final decisions as well. You can get a free Founders Club hat still. There are a few remaining. We've had a few people sign up, so a few more are off the rack. Be sure to sign up. It's just a few bucks a month. And after SMU's win over Houston, how could you not jump on board? Because there's a lot of re- recruiting momentum right now around the program. On top of that, another prospect we're watching on the defensive line is Kevin Allen. Um, he's somebody that SMU really dove into some ju- uh, to some senior tape and really liked what he brings to the table they went ahead and offered him. Uh, I think he's somebody that could find his way onto campus for a visit. He goes to Everman. Um, and look, he's taken one official visit so far, which was to Wyoming. SMU offered. Louisiana Tech is in on him. Tulane in on him as well. Uh, he's got a Louisiana Tech visit he's expected to take. And he also has a Washington State offer too. So kind of a mixed bag of offers, but Somebody where they turned on the tape, they really liked him at 6'3", 280, um, and would be a nice kind of final piece to that defensive line class that includes Wimberley, that includes Braden Flowers, who's played on both sides of the ball and and has a lot of upside, I think, um, just coming from the San Antonio era, uh, area. And then we'll see what SMU does in terms of corners. This is going to be a really interesting position to monitor for SMU because, I mean, let's be honest, you watch that Houston game, On Saturday night, SMU needs corners in this class. I mean, honestly, they need a lot of things uh, in this class in general, but it's going to be interesting to see how they're able to kind of address the position through the JUCO uh, ranks as well. Um, We've seen CJ Blocker, the Utah commit that they were on, pick up a lot of big time attention. I think he's kind of destined for that high end power five now type of program, Um, but they are looking at some of these. uh, um, Juco prospects as well. Two of them, Channing Canada, who's got a lot of SEC attention now, and then Ben Osuki out of a uh, former Richmond Foster standout who now has an offer. He's one that I could see SMU being able to reel in somehow. Um, he goes to um, uh, Blinn Junior College. He's got some uh, offers from the likes of Oregon State. Utah has been talking to him a lot. Um, so he's one to kind of monitor, but I could see this being a class for SMU in 2023 where they load up at corner and safety, whether it be JUCO, whether it be transfer portal and address those spots because the depth right now is just not where it needs to be. And actually I asked Scott Simons kind of, you know, how are you working on technique right now? And they just can't go live at all in practice. And I know it's it's an excuse or whatever, but they just don't have the depth to even do it right now. Um, They work it in thuds, but it's it's the safety room since Chase Cromartie left, since Isaiah Wacoby has been unavailable. A couple other guys, Jaden Lawton has been, you know uh, left the team. That secondary is just thin, and they're getting by with the guys that they have. And right now, they aren't getting it done. So they're going to try to address that position. There are a lot of older guys in that room that they'll have to replace anyway. Guys like Nick Roberts, Sam Westfall, uh, Armani Johnson, players like that. Um, It'll be interesting to see what the portal yields as well once they start firing that up. So I could see SMU still swinging for a running back as well in 2023. We've seen kind of a mixed bag in terms of durability for that room. Uh, Brandon High, a UTSA commit, was on campus this past weekend too. So he's one to monitor. But this class overall is pretty well taken care of for the most part. And then it'll be a heavy emphasis on the transfer portal for SMU. Now, moving on to the class of 2024, the Mustangs had quite the group on campus. And if you're a subscriber to OnThePonyExpress.com, you got the scoop on who was on campus. 
Uh, I can spoil one or two for you that have tweeted that they were on campus and kind of showed uh, what they had cooking on Sunday night. And that was five-star edge prospect Colin Simmons out of Duncanville, the nation's number one edge prospect in the class of 2024, was on the hilltop. Uh, he, look, I mean, long shot for SMU, right? But they do have, you know, some ties to that program. They've done a good job with Duncanville players, in my opinion, with Roger Daniels, um, even navigating that whole situation. So keep swinging, keep finding ways to get him and his teammate, Kadavian Dotson Walker, on campus. Uh, Dotson Walker is one of the best safeties in the country. Somebody that I feel like could walk right in and play tomorrow for SMU at that position. That's how high I am on him. Both of them were on campus. And I'll give you one more. And you should check out on theponyexpress.com for some tidbits on uh, why I feel the way I do about him. But William Speedy Nettles out of Dallas Christian, a high three star, another prospect who rates as the 80 as an 89. So one step short of a four star. He was back on campus and showed a ton of support for the Mustangs. Uh, and, and I think that's a prospect you have to squarely circle in the class of 2024, a local prospect who's been on campus a bunch of times. He's got quite a few Power 5 offers, Baylor, TCU, USC, um, some other programs involved there. But um, SMU's recruited him harder than anyone, in my opinion, just kind of watching him. So um, I like where SMU stands a lot for William Nettles. Um, and he's somebody that you've got to squarely circle as far as, you know, somebody who could really jump in this class. So um, we've got a lot of notes. Um, sorry, knocked the mic there. We've got a lot of notes on kind of how that that day went for these guys. Um, who's, you know, prospect, which ones are prospects that SMU sits in a good spot for. Uh, but but they really, you, you have to give credit to guys like Scott Natty. Uh, Jordan Blake, Danny Wesley, uh, Alex Brown, Bobby Brown, all of those guys that are really organizing the recruiting efforts on campus. Um, Shay Taylor, they had to put this together and it just went well. You had all your top 2024 prospects on campus, basically um, from the Dallas area coming over to SMU. Some of them were even at other colleges a day prior. You know, some of them were at the LSU game the day before. Um, and so they came back to Dallas and instead of crashing after going all the way down to Baton Rouge, they came up to SMU. So kudos to the staff for uh, putting together what was a monster recruiting weekend overall. I mean, you've got to be feeling really good uh, about the recruiting efforts from SMU right now and riding high um, off of that win over Houston without a doubt. I do want to touch on a couple prospects that were on campus for the game in the class of 2024 as well, since we're talking about them. Uh, one of them, Tyler Aronson, the quarterback commit for SMU in the class um, was on campus. That is great, you know, for SMU to have him back on campus. Uh, he might be back again this coming, uh, or I, or he, um, he's probably done with visits because they're in playoffs now, um, but he's coming back from a thumb injury. Uh, he's probably not going to make his game this weekend. Uh, he's look, trying to get back for it next week. So hopefully uh, his Vero Beach team in Florida can get the win and move on and he can get back to playing. But um, he was on campus, which was huge. And then one more prospect I'm going to single out for you guys because he's been as positive on SMU as you can get. 2024 Frisco Centennial running back Harry Stewart was back at SMU this weekend for another visit. He picked up the offer earlier this fall. He came and visited right after that. Uh, and he's always had really good things to say about SMU. Four-star prospect, one of the top running backs in the nation, is right down the road for SMU. And they had him on campus for the Houston game. Produced a really good performance in the run game for SMU um, from Tyler Levine. Even Velton Gardner got in there a little bit. And that was the type of showing offensively you want to have in front of these kids. And so Harry Stewart was there for that his second visit to campus in the fall. And then I'll let you in on this, guys. This is the last prospect I'll spoil from our tidbits on the site, but he was also on campus Sunday. It's a long way to go. It's early. And he's got offers from Texas A&M, Baylor, Cal, Texas, or he doesn't have a Texas offer, but they're showing interest. And eventually, who knows? He could be somebody to really say, you know what? I see early playing time. 
Kamar Wheaton's going to be a couple years into his SMU career by the time I get there. Some of these other running backs will be gone. I could step in there, probably play right away and play a lot. So as a running back, you don't have that big, that long of a, uh, of a shelf life anyway. Go somewhere where you can get some carries as a freshman, then get going as a sophomore and junior, and then go to the draft. That's kind of the, the way I would be looking at it if I was a running back prospect, but Lord knows I'm not athletic enough to do that. Um, so that's the last prospect I want to touch on. Class of 2024 sits at number one in the AAC right now, of course, with Tyler Aronson being uh, the quarterback commit and highly rated. Uh, but recruiting in the class of 2024 is certainly picking up. That win over Houston, and I drove this home on the Monday podcast talking about the game, big for momentum. SMU, if they can win out down the stretch, you're talking about a first-year coaching staff that will have a lot to sell going into the offseason, getting these guys back on campus in January for junior days. Uh, it's trending well for SMU on the recruiting front. So just wanted to kind of do a, an exclusive, exclusively recruiting podcast for you guys. We're going to break down a lot of the stuff kind of leading up to national or the early signing period in December, kind of how the roster is impacted by this class, what to expect for the next class, top targets there, all those things. Pick up an OnThePonyExpress.com subscription. It's a few bucks a month. Check us out. It's basketball season now too. And Thursday, we'll preview the game at USF, as well as talk about uh, the first game of the Rob Lanier era. So hope you guys enjoyed this recruiting only edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. Please keep hitting that subscribe button to our YouTube channel. We're almost up to 300 subscribers. Please hit that button, get us to that next milestone, and we'll keep marching toward that thousand subscriber mark on our YouTube channel. It doesn't take much. Just hit the subscribe button. Uh, it's free and you don't have to watch the videos. Hopefully you do, but hit that subscribe button for me, please. Hope you guys enjoyed this edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. We will catch you guys later this week with our preview edition. Lots to talk about on the board. The board's been buzzing, so be sure to check it out on theponyexpress.com, part of the On3 family. I'm Billy Embody. Thanks for listening to this edition, and we'll catch you guys later in the week.